Hello everybody, welcome to my garden. My name is Paul, this is It's The Camping Thing, and you join me for another video. If you're new here, hello and welcome. Talk about all things camping related, and if you are a regular visitor, welcome back. Now, the tent behind me is the Nature Hike Opalis 3, a tent which I've had since late 2022. It's now February 2023. I've used this tent several times, albeit not while camping, but campsite camping for sure. And it's a tent that I absolutely love. Now, I did allude to this in my recent video, which I'll put a card up here for you, if I don't trip over a peg. Um, I'll put a card up here for you if you wanna check that out, but please check that out at the end of this video. I'll also put a link at the end of the video as well, so if you wanna check that video out. And in that video, I talked about choosing the right tent that's perfect for you. Now, this tent is perfect for me, and I wanna to explain to you more in depth the reasons why. And I think this tent gets a lot of overlooked by a lot of people because it's a tent which is suitable for both wild camping and campsite camping. And why is that the case? Well, if you're gonna be going campsite camping, which I'm sure many of you are, then you are gonna be wanting to spend maybe three or four nights at your location. And you wanna store all your gear, your clothes, your food, all in that tent with you. The last thing you wanna do is park your car up either nearby or a little bit further away, which you have to do in some campsites and have to keep going backwards and forwards. You want it all with you. So if you're gonna be spending three or four nights, you're gonna have a quantity of food and a quantity of clothes to last you that duration. But if you're gonna be going wild camping, then you want a tent which is gonna blend into your surroundings and being the color green is a good start. And also as well, you want it to be a relatively small pack size. So when you're gonna be going hiking over a, a, a terrain for many miles, you want it to be a relatively small pack size. So this tent fits the bill perfectly. It is a three person tent. So you've got plenty of room inside, but also as well, it packs down tiny as well, blends into its surroundings. So it's pretty, really good. It's that sort of, it hits the sweet spot between wild camping and campsite camping. Also as well, it's got a huge porch or vestibule at the front of the tent. So if you want to do cooking inside, you can do, although I would open at least one door to allow some air to come in to ventilate the tent for safety reasons. And yeah, it's a tunnel tent. It's uh, 7,001 grade aluminium tubing. You've got three poles. The largest one is in the middle, which is silver. The two ends are exactly the same length and they are color coded as blue. And you've also got a unique feature at the back for extra ventilation. So this tent ticks a lot of boxes and I think gets overlooked by a lot of people out there. Now, previously, the Nature Hike tent that I had was the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2. And that's a great tent. It is a freestanding tent, so you can literally set it all up and then move it around. It's got three adhesic poles that go cross over for added strength. And it's got two vestibules either side with two doors. Now, that was great. However, this vestibule or porch at the front is huge in comparison. So for me, it's a step forward from the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2. Right, that's all said, let's go and have a look inside. So inside the tent, we're in the porch area. This is the vestibule area and it's huge. It, I mean, I could sleep in here. It's, it, it's like, I mean, you could just go, echo, echo, you know, it is, it's, it's huge. And I love it, it's got two doors. There's one that you are right outside there and then there's another, another door on here. So if you've got a beautiful view out of that way, you can sit here and watch the world go by or alternatively look out that way. And I can cook out here. I can open the door for ventilation so that those gases don't build up and we don't want that because that can be toxic. And also as well, it's a great area where I can shut the doors and I can go to the toilet at a campsite. We're talking at a campsite here. So um, at the moment, I don't have a dog. My dog Buster passed away earlier this month and it's still a bit raw, but we are, we are thinking about getting another dog. We are certainly looking at, at it. And I certainly plan to use this tent for when I go away, taking my new dog away with me. Uh, still feels a bit weird saying that, it's still quite early, but I, I plan to take another dog with me. Now, why is this porch area important? And the pure answer is, if you've ever had a dog before, sometimes they get a little bit nervous and anxious and they wanna be around you 24 seven. And there's certain places where you can't take that dog, i.e. the toilet block. So what I did with Buster when we went to Windermere in 2021 is we had the Keshwar Air Seconds 4.1 Fresh and Black tent, which is a huge four-person tent, but it also comes with a huge 
pack size as well, which takes up a lot of real estate in your boot. And then you've got the big pump to inflate the tubes as well. With this tent, you don't have any of that. It's a relatively small pack size, about shoulder width apart, and it, there's no pump. So for, for transporting this tent to and from a campsite is great. It means I can get more in the car other than the other tent. But I say, when I want to go to the toilet, and I don't necessarily want to go for a number one, I want to go for a number two, I'm going to try and keep this so anybody's eating it's, it's You know what I mean. Um, so what I did with Buster is I would take a portable toilet and I would sit down and I would do what I needed to do. Then I'd put Buster in my car, lock the car, and then I'd go and empty the contents, clean the, clean the toilet, and then come back. That was far quicker and far easier then putting Buster in the car for maybe 10, 15 minutes, and then coming back. It meant he had less time on his own in the car getting stressed out. So what I intend to do with this tent is the same thing, but obviously with this tent, with the smaller pack size, it, and I can go to the toilet in here, it just means that that dog, whoever it is, when we eventually see it, um, will be spending less time potentially in the car alone and getting stressed than if I would be if I went to do the toilet business in the toilet block, yeah? And that's why I like it. I can cook in here, I can do my toilet business, and yeah, I can sit up in here. I can use my Trekology Easy Go folding camper chair. I can sit here, no problem. It's great. Right, next is the bedroom. So inside the bedroom, it's a three-person tent, which means that three people can actually fit inside this tent, which is brilliant. Also the length, which I believe is 235 centimeters in length, means that if you're gonna be someone of the tall variety, it means you're gonna have plenty of room for when you lay down and you're not gonna find that nagging feeling where your head's rubbing against one end and your feet are gonna rubbing against the other. 235 centimeter length is awesome. And believe you me, for someone who hates it when you can feel the tent rubbing at the end of your feet, that's a great feeling. And it's not only just your height, you've got to imagine the fact that you're going to be in a sleeping bag, which is going to overhang from your feet. So it's not just the fact that, oh, I'm five foot 10, so this should fit. No, you've got to think about the overhang of your sleeping bag that you're going to be sleeping in. So the 235 centimeter length in the bedroom for me is awesome. Absolutely love it. Um, three people, you can definitely get three people in here. Um, now there is two SIM mats down here. Now these are a little bit wider than your traditional pad, your sleeping pad, which I've got here. I've got two SIMs zipped together in the middle. Um, and that's just basically to have like a mat area. So when I get out of bed, it's not gonna be the coldness of the floor. I've also got a foil mat under here to reflect any heat back up into my body. But we've also got a pad here. This is called an Oosport. A lot of people ask me about this and they say, oh, where do you get that pad from? It's called Oosport. Now, sadly, this is discontinued. You cannot buy it. It's incredibly comfortable, um, but a slight cost to heat because there is no R value with this. There's no foil properties that are gonna reflect that heat back up to your body. So you will find that with buying something like this, not that you can buy this exact same one, that you're gonna need to buy a foil mat to reflect all that heat and you're not losing it into the ground. You've got two pockets either side for your valuables. There isn't one at the other end. And sadly, there isn't a light hook. The only light hook here is at the front near the door. So if you're gonna be laying in bed down this end and you fall asleep, you can't reach up and turn the light off, which is a bit of an oversight really. But again, it's a compromise that we can, we can live without. We've got a porch for the door. So when you put the, got the door, we've got a separate porch. Tuck that away nice and neat. It's all really good. I say the length for me is awesome. The width is great. It means I've got plenty of space to store my valuables down there as a lone traveler. Or if when I'm taking a dog, the dog would be on in this side next to me and I can have my valuables down that side and all my, my clothes and my food down there. Um, yeah, it's great. But another great feature of this tent I haven't even got to yet. And I'm gonna show you that right now. Now this is a feature that I couldn't show you in my first impressions video because it was about to pour rain, sunlight was fading, and I need to be quick. However, there's no rain at the moment, and I'm gonna show you how I do this. Now this isn't necessarily the way that you should do it because I can't see any videos or instructions on how you should do it. And I've only done this once. So this area here at the back of the tent 
if it's not raining, you can actually open this up to allow ventilation through. So the inner part of the tent shows through. Now, this is how I did it. So I pulled out the peg at the back. Luckily for me, the ground is really soft. And I've left the guide ropes in. The guide ropes are important for the structure of the tent. And then what I've done is unclipped the outer from the inner, from the, the footprint, which comes included. That's another great feature of this tent. The, the footprint does include, is included with the tent, and that means you've got added, added protection for your tent. Now, with this, you can roll, roll the outer up, roll it up, roll it, roll it, roll it. And then there's a little hook inside which you then latch onto the hoop, which is on to the guide ropes. The guide ropes are holding it in place. Roll that up, roll that up. And then hook it under there. Now, as you can see, the bedroom area is a little bit saggy. So, and this is the point I'm not 100% sure on. There's an elastic there. Again, the ground is really soft. So there we go. Now we've got ventilation from going through the tent, which can get rid of any condensation a little bit quicker. Again, if it was raining, obviously, I would put that straight back down again. And alternatively, if it was really windy, I, I would put this down again. Um, but if it's a fair weather day, nice and sunny, really hot, then you've got that. And you, from the inside, you can see outside, which is great. I'm gonna show you that right now. So there we go. So you can be laying in here and imagine there's a nice field with a gorgeous view and not a conservatory and a fence, but you can lay in here and allow that breeze to come through and cool the tent. It really is brilliant. Obviously you lose a bit of privacy, so I wouldn't leave this open at night. And also as well, if you fall asleep and the weather does turn in the night, then you're not gonna be waterproof either, but it's a great feature for those sunny, hot days that you've got. And again, we've got two doors. So this is the other side of the tent. And I'll take you for a little bit of a walk around. We've got ventilation at either end. Now there is no, sadly, no little little stick thing that goes in there, like a little foam stick that you sometimes get to keep it open. So if it does rain, then maybe you wanna use the Velcro and push that down. That'll keep the rain at bay, or we'll keep it open like that to allow at least some air to come through. And there's another one at the other end. Guide ropes all the way around. And as I say, you've got this back end here, which is open, and that is, that is a wonderful feature. I really can't wait for the hot weather to come, nice hot summer's day, and then set that up and then be at a campsite somewhere and just enjoying the day. Really looking forward to that. The tent does come with pegs. It does come with an included footprint to, uh, to help protect the bedroom area. But as you can see, there is nothing for this area here. So that's why I've got this purple gym mat because uh, say the ground is quite muddy at the moment but again you can see in there you've got plenty plenty of room and these sim mats as i said they are quite wide uh, they're wider than normal pad as you can see here so you could get three of these potentially inside there uh, plenty plenty of room and then as i said there's only one light hook which you can see there there isn't one at the other end it is It is a great tent. I absolutely adore it, and I can't wait to go out camping in this. Right, that's the back all sealed up in case we get any rain. It's kind of threatening it. Um, but yeah, this tent fits a lot of my needs from what I need from a tent. It's a great tent if you're thinking about going wall camping and also doing campsite camping. Yes, there are gonna be compromises along the way, but you have to work out ideally what's, what compromises you can leave out for you. And for me, I can do without the, the blackout bedroom. 
I can do without the white exterior to keep the tent a little bit cooler. I've got the ventilation from the back, which is a great unique feature on this tent. I've got a huge porch or vestibule at the front so I can do my uh, toilet business and all that in there, should I do so. Um, and yeah, it's a tent which has really, really impressed me. It's got a lot of features and benefits that I find suits me really well. And maybe, maybe they're features and benefits that you don't find applicable to you and your style of camping. Maybe there's other tents out there that fit the bill even better. These are just my opinions and your opinions may differ from mine and that's perfectly okay. Now, um, I'm looking forward to the future and taking this tent camping with me and hopefully taking another fur baby along with me. Uh, I also want to touch upon this about, I want to thank you all for your condolences about Buster. He passed away almost four weeks ago and it's still very raw, very painful, and we miss him terribly. Um, he was only nine years old when he passed away. He was a little bit ill towards the end over Christmas and into New Year. And uh, we're all really missing him terribly. And we have to look towards the future and life has to go on. I loved him with all my heart, but life has to go on. And I look forward to the day when I can go to a campsite and take another little dog with me and we can see more of this beautiful place we all call home and go camping it again. I wanna thank you very much for watching. If you watched this far, thank you very much. Uh, if you've liked this video or found it helpful, please consider liking, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much. I hope this insight into the nature hype of Palace 3 has been of some help. Take care, folks.